Friends, I am uh, Vinod Sharma and uh, I am Senior Professor of Disaster Management and in this session we will discuss about the paradigm shift uh, from relief towards preparedness and mitigation in disaster management. You know that uh, earlier our system was relief centric and uh, the uh, issue was with the Ministry of Agriculture. Why? Because uh, mostly in India there was water related hazard. Either there were floods or droughts. Many times, you know, half of the country was flooded and half was facing drought. And uh, uh, most of the time, you know, farmers were at risk. And uh, for that, we were having the mechanism. So the entire thing was relief centric. We were having a sort of calendar for uh, that these are the months which are disaster months, you know. So re relief commissioners of the state, central relief commissioner, because their name was relief commissioner. They were only for relief. And uh, uh, so this calendar was working that these are the mon monsoon month and uh, uh, we will be facing floods and we will have to give relief. And after relief, we will we used to wait, you know, for another disaster. So this was the thing. But uh, in, in 90s, 1990 till 99, United Nations started IDNDR, International Decade for Natural Disaster Reduction. And this decade was very useful. Very useful in the sense that all the developing countries, including India, because we were thinking that relief is disaster management. And uh, you talk to any officer uh, in 90s, uh, they will be saying that uh, in case there is any disaster, we will provide relief, we should be having mechanism and uh, uh, we should be better prepared for relief basically. That was disaster management. But in this decade, uh, UN emphasized that we should shift, you know, from relief centric thing to disaster preparedness for mitigation. And uh, every year they were giving slogans, you know, for example, uh, for women and children in disaster, disaster education, public education, warning system, and so on and so forth. Every year there was a slogan and uh, then they were saying that you should have a disaster risk reduction day and every year uh, they, they give a date that every third Wednesday of October may be considered as international day for disaster uh, reduction. And in, from 1990 till 99 we were uh, observing this uh, IDNDR and India was al also observing 1993, for the first time, this institution, Indian Institute of Public Administration, we organized a relief commissioner's program and that was the first program in the country on disaster preparedness and mitigation. And it was supported by Ministry of Agriculture and UNDP. And we brought, you know, experts from the region, from New York, from Asian Disaster Preparedness Center from uh, Geneva, from other UNDMT and other places and all these people, uh, they exposed them that what are the components of preparedness and in case we are preparedness, then in case you spend one dollar on preparedness, you save 99 dollar on other side. This is the Americans say. So they are saying that you spend some money on disaster preparedness and you will be saving lots of money on other side. So this was the focus basically and after 1993 there was another event which has happened which was very important and that we can say that it was a mid review of IDNDR activity that is Yokohama conference in 1994. And this Yokohama conference was again, uh, you know, it was uh, people from different parts of the world, they came and they discussed 
and the result that yes i think there should be a shift from relief towards preparedness and there should be a consistent effort because people were it was not easy you know there was a system everybody uh, you know was uh, oriented towards relief so this change uh, you know and this th there should be systematic change so they emphasize that every state every country uh, should do something for that and for that the capacity building is is important so 1995 the national center for disaster management was created by government of india and it was here in the indian institute of public administration and i am very happy to tell you that i am the first coordinator of that center which is today national institute of disaster management so uh, for capacity building we started working and uh, uh, we prepared different module for uh, uh, flood mitigation for drought management for cyclone for earthquake for landslides we started documenting each and every disaster in the meantime 1999 there was a odisha super cyclone and this changed the entire disaster management system in the country because uh, people never faced this kind of disaster and that's why i selected it as a case study and i will discuss with you in separate session so this was a very unique kind of disaster and uh, uh the state was not prepared the center was not prepared you know because they couldn't assist it in time and uh, then in 2001 there was uh, uh, gujarat earthquake so these two and then tsunami you know in 2004 and this changed the entire uh, scenario and uh, uh, we 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 enacted you know disaster management act and uh, then the paradigm shift you know from relief towards uh, preparedness and mitigation actually after this decade there was another thing which has happened that is the uh, you know hugo framework of action uh, hugo framework that was in 2005 till 2015 for 10 years and this was again a un program and uh, this was also giving direction you know to the states that you should focus more on preparedness and uh, uh, there should be uh, preparedness plans in each and every country there should be a national plan and one step you know towards preparedness so hugo framework that was for 10 years that was a very useful program and uh, uh, this give direction you know to each and every country but 2015 uh, there was sindai framework and sindai framework was signed by our honorable home minister shri rajnath singh was there in 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 japan and uh, he signed that document and that is a very useful document i should say they are saying that there should be four priorities each and every country i mean the first priority is that knowing risk you know you should know risk and for that and this is a very big exercise for knowing risk you should know hazards for knowing risk you should know vulnerabilities and at different level so if you know risk basically your half of the work is done so this is a very very important thing that suppose you are uh, in any department because uh, when i discuss with you about the plans every department is supposed to prepare a plan and suppose you are sitting in your office so first of all you see that what are the risk around suppose you are living in a, in delhi so we should know you know how much is the risk basically and then we can prepare uh, ourselves and we can prepare plan accordingly so knowing risk is very important and uh, they give emphasis on this this is a full fledged subject which is covering uh, your hazards your vulnerability 
vulnerability of the place what can be done you know that is how to reduce you know that vulnerability capacity so all these things will come when you say knowing risk second important point of sindai framework is the uh, governance that risk risk governance every country it should be part of governance because for example uh, you know district magistrate or district authorities they are doing number of things and in case it is part of governance which we say mainstreaming so mainstreaming means that in whatever you do in education in irrigation in agriculture in road construction in school construction in each and every program which you are having at district level each and every program which you are having at the state level at national level in case you have risk in, in into consideration then uh, it is part of governance so i think this is very important the second part is it is very uh, and and you will appreciate that that wherever you 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 give you can have uh, several examples wherever you see the good governance you see there is a disaster risk is less it is a risk reduction basically because if there is a good governance then uh, you know they are meeting the needs of people and they it is according to the vulnerability of the place it is according to the requirement of the place and that's why the risk is reduced third thing is invest in disaster risk reduction investment means that um, i mean it's a mitigation fund as i told you that the finance commission also recommended that there should be mitigation fund and uh, so in unless and until you spend money on disaster risk reduction you cannot achieve goals so uh, there should be some fund available earlier we were having only one fund that is the calamity relief fund today we are having uh, national disaster response fund and national disaster mitigation fund so this mitigation fund means that we have intention that before disaster we want to span and this is the sindai framework basically so whatever plan we have prepared today at national level in 2019 we have revised it and that is saying that we should follow each and every priority of the sindai framework each and every target of the sindai framework and ministry of home affairs is uh, monitoring it similarly every state you know they are also doing the same thing and uh, their state plan and district plan they are based on the sindai framework the last priority of the sindai framework is that in case disaster happen then we should be prepared there should be a full preparedness and in case suppose building collapse or something happen uh, devastation environmental uh, loss then built back better so built back better is the concept which is given by sindai framework and i will give you several, several examples in which uh, india is doing uh, you, know, you know a lot uh, for this and we have this thing in mind that in case uh, we spend more money or in case we invest you know in mitigation then definitely we will minimize losses we will minimize loss of life and there are n number of examples for that for example amphan you know this was a very big typhoon a very big cyclone and uh, in may 2020 there was amphan uh, cyclone which affected odisha and west bengal and we could see that uh, this was a very big cyclone but because we were prepared and there was preparedness uh, particularly in odisha there was the loss was minimized in west bengal there was uh, loss of economic loss was there there was uh, loss of life but uh, the in brief i can say that in case we are 
uh, you know more prepared in case we invest you know in mitigation then definitely you know the uh, losses particularly the life loss that can be minimized and that is the main aim of disaster management thank you